Dear colleagues, my name is Danny Busser from the University of Bern. I was supposed to go to Dublin uh, to attend the Perio Master Clinic of EFP, but I couldn't go there for medical reasons. So therefore, I created here a short version of my presentation as a video presentation, and I want to share it with my colleagues through YouTube channel of the Bern Congress organizer. You see, we are dealing often with these kind of aesthetic disaster cases. And uh, we learned that in most of the cases, uh, the main cause is improper performance of the clinician, such as malpositioned implants, oversized implants, or inappropriate number of implants. These cases are very challenging uh, from a surgical point of view. One is that when you remove these implants, you should not cause additional bone loss around in these future implant sites. And second, uh, you have to fix or re-establish the keratinized mucosa because it's often hugely lacking. See, for the implant removal, we are using a reverse torque technique uh, with a special kit called the BTI Extractor Kit. Uh, from Spain. It's a very uh, attractive uh, tool. I will show it to you in a minute. The second one is when to fix the re-established keratinized mucosa and we do that most often during implant removal surgery. In the following I will show you two cases with an early approach. That means we have removed uh, the implants, we fix the keratinized mucosa, and then we place the implants two, three months later. The first case is 42 years of age. The implant was in place for 10 years and the mucosa recession got worse and worse. And therefore the implant has to be removed. So the uh, axis can be shown very nicely, a lack of uh, facial bone wall because that implant is in a facial malposition in the crestal area. Then the implant was removed, you see here the malposition, this BTI uh, extractor insert is inserted in a counterclockwise fashion and then we added then the ratchet to unscrew the implant. The defect was freshened inside, we did a socket grafting or defect grafting with BIOS collagen and then we put a soft tissue graft on top of it. Uh, that uh, will heal well and then we get more keratinized mucosa. A potential problem is a mismatch with the color, so therefore sometimes you have to do then uh, six, eight weeks later a resurfacing of the newly formed epithelium and in this case actually we had to do it. Here you see the one week post-surgery, three weeks post-surgery and then six weeks uh, we did a little refresher here and then here you see at eight weeks, uh, quite okay. We analyzed the case then for implant placement. You see, we have to get into a better position. Will not be difficult. We just have to use our brain. It's a brain guided implant placement. And I want to show you here a short version of this video clip from a master's course where we show these kind of cases uh, uh, to the participants of the master course. You see a triangular flap full thickness flap elevation. You see that the soft tissue is rather thick. Then we take first autogenous bone and store it in a mixture of blood and ringer solution. We want to get uh, the release of growth factors out of the bone chips into this uh, bone condition medium, as we call it. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Dr. Gruber in Dublin has explained all the details about this bone condition medium because he did the research with us. Here you see then uh, these, these bone chips stored in the BCM. Here then the implant bed preparation, which is a spiral drill to start. Then we check the position with a depth gauge. Uh, if needed, we can make small uh, corrections. Then we go on a uh, second and third spiral drill, and then uh, we are ready to put the implant in. In this case, we used a tissue level implant of Strauman because we had an, a vertical uh, bone deficiency from that previous situation. You see the buckle bone wall defect now. This is now how we activate uh, our uh, DBBM particles with the BCM. This is the blood with the growth factors, in particular TGF beta 1. The bone chips go in place. Uh, so here they continue to release growth factors, then after two or three days, mainly BMP2. 
And here you see the activated uh, BIOS particles that uh, can be used uh, to enhance bone formation in that area. Here you see then the membrane that is cut into two pieces. The membrane is applied first, larger piece, uh, soaked in BCM blood, and that helps us to adapt it very nicely. And you see then the second strip is uh, used uh, to go for double layer technique, as we call it. It stabilizes the whole augmentation area. No need for tax in a case like this. And then at the end, a tension-free primary wound closure following incision of the periosteum. So this is very nice here. You see then uh, at completion, uh, and you see here how the patient healed uh, at two months. Everything is fine. And we go in and do a punch technique uh, to reopen the implant uh, to go for then an impression. This was done by uh, Professor Urs Pelser, and then he uh, produced with the technician uh, the acrylic crown uh, to go for a soft tissue conditioning phase. Uh, within six months, then uh, we do a, a, a soft tissue conditioning. Uh, you see here on the upper right uh, how well the soft tissues are adapting. We did a second resurfacing with the CO2 laser. Uh, to get an even smoother surface of the mucosa. And then Professor Belzer decided to go for the final restoration. Uh, here you see the final restoration, which is a cerama metal crown in this case. And you see that we have been able to correct the soft tissue defect beautifully. Uh, see the papilla is still a little short, but that we had the same when we started. In the mesial uh, side, it's very good. The result is slightly compromised because we still have some fine scar lines. Uh, this is a two-year follow-up uh, in the beginning of this year. Okay, the second patient also done with Professor Belser. You see 2014, a younger patient, and he's obviously continued to grow. And you see here a step of about three millimeters. The implant has also a huge recession and also the lateral incisor has a, a short incisal edge compared to the contralateral tooth. So it was uh, clear, you see here the, the, the cone beam that the axis is the problem. Here you see it very nicely. And also this implant has to be removed. We first started to remove the crown uh, to get some spontaneous soft tissue closure. Here you see after eight weeks how that uh, functioned very well. This is the burden langer technique. And then we took the implant off. And here now I show you an, an, uh, then the BTI extractor kit. You see, you select an appropriate dimension. Normally it's the number two, that is the middle size. For these kind of stromal implants, you see this is an indicator that shows you uh, how bad this malaxis is. Then we insert by hand this BTI uh, insertion tool and we achieve a friction inside. And then we take a ratchet, a very strong ratchet, and the ratchet helps us to build up in a counterclockwise direction, the friction inside. This is huge force you can apply. Here you see that we go beyond 200 Newton centimeter because this little uh, opens up. And you see that uh, we are continuing and it takes quite some time to do that. So it's still very stable, the implant. We go another quarter turn, and I think now it will fracture the interface. Huh? The bone implant interface will fracture, and then the implant gets loose, and the defect is just the shape of the implant. This is a fantastic technique. doesn't work with ceramic implants, unfortunately. You can only do that for titanium implants. You'll see here now how I can take it off. Flapless implant extraction technique or implant removal technique. So it's flapless. Now we do a soft tissue graft, a small one in this case only. And you see it healed very nicely. 
And about three months later, uh, we went back in and placed an implant. As expected, uh, we have to do a contour augmentation because there is a lack of bone on the facial aspect where we had the recession. You see here now we do the same technique. We are using a bone level implant of Stroman, uh, a platform switching type implant. Uh, we apply autogenous bone. We apply then uh, the DBBM uh, collagen membrane double layer technique and we go for an tension-free primary wound closure. You see that uh, then the patient got a partial danger, a flipper. Uh, we shortened uh, the flipper in, the pond, in this uh, single tooth area to avoid any pressure to the tissue. Then at eight weeks, uh, the reopening was done and uh, Professor Belzer started uh, uh, the restoration in the beginning with an uh, acrylic crown on the implant to do some soft tissue conditioning. We wanted to replace uh, also tooth, uh, now the crown on tooth number 21, but the uh, insurance did not allow first to do that. So we had to wait. Finally, then in uh, three years later, then uh, they found an agreement. They shared the cost, the patient and the insurance. And now you see an implant crown, a new crown on tooth number 21 and an uh, and veneer. Uh, on tooth number 12. Uh, beautifully done. Pascal Müller in Zurich is our top technician we are normally using. In, and you see the outcome is really very, very satisfactory. With ECOK, I wanted to show you how we treat these patients. If you are interested to see how we treat these patients, then I can only refer to our master courses we are offering at University of Bern. The strengths of these master courses, of course, are the live surgeries and the lectures with an excellent faculty, very experienced faculty, including Professor Belzer, uh, Pro Professor Chapuy, myself, uh, Professor Bosshart, uh, and Professor Skoulian for the aesthetic master course. So this is just one of the best in the world, this faculty. So here you see the two courses we have. We have a purely surgical one in June always. This is a GPR and sinus floor elevation procedures. Almost sold out already. So there are about five, ten seats left. So if you're interested, hurry up and sign up. Then the aesthetic master course that includes a fourth day on how to fix aesthetic disaster cases is in the beginning of September there. We have some sign-ups, but not, uh, not sold out, uh, of course, because that's in six months. Also visit our homepage. Would be a pleasure to welcome you in Bern. I uh, thank you for attention. I apologize again to my friends in Dublin that I couldn't come. But uh, I'm impressed to see how we can use digital technology to do these kind uh, lectures from the distance. That might be a future approach in certain cases. Thank you very much.